In this video, we're going to be focusing on cleaning up the front of the mix and the end of the mix to make sure there's no extraneous noises, and that will give us a nice clean file to work with when we go to master it. And we're going to be doing this by using the master track and fader inside of Pro Tools and the automation that's available to us on that master track. Let's just start by playing the front of the song and see what instrument enters first. Hmm, seems like the saxophone is the first instrument I hear entering. Let's take a closer look at that and make the scale of the track a little larger so we can see it better. I'm just going to click on the boundary of the track and drag it down, then right-click on the mouse, the new feature in Pro Tools 8, and switch to my zoomer tool. This will enable us to really get inside that sax track and find his exact entrance. Let's play a little and make sure. Yeah, he's the guy that starts the song. So, let's move up to the master fader, and we're going to drag that master fader track down right next to the saxophone. By viewing these two tracks next to each other, it'll make it much easier for us to put in some automation breakpoints and pinpoint where that saxophone comes in. So let's right-click on our mouse and switch to the grabber tool. The grabber tool will let us put in those little dots that they call automation breakpoints. Let's put one right before the saxophone entrance, and then move over to the left, click once, and grab and drag the volume line down. Go to the left and pull that one down, and switch back to our selector tool and play a piece and see what we got. I think that's fine. The beginning of this song is pretty much done. Let's move on to the end of the song. Let me zoom out a little bit. And some of you are probably wondering, how am I zooming so smoothly? I have a control surface, and I'm using the scroll wheel with a combination of modifier keys to do that. Let's check out the end of the song and see what's going on here. Well, that seems really clean, but I still want to put a fade on the master fader just to be safe. Let's right-click on our mouse and go to the zoomer tool so we can get a closer look at the end. Now back to the hand tool so we can put a breakpoint on the volume automation line of the master fader track. And I think right about um, there and at the end, pull it down and let's play it. Let me get closer to the end. Back to the selector tool and let me play it one more time. Ah, you see, this is not good. The song is fading. The master fader is fading down and it's not over yet. Have to fix this. So, let me switch back to the grabber tool. Hold down Option click on the automation breakpoint and that deletes breakpoints let me move to the end one hold down option click on the breakpoint and now the master fader is back to its original level so let's put another breakpoint there again another one at the end and now i have to switch back one more time to the selector tool in order to play it see that's much much better that's the way it should be fade is happening after the last beat of the song. But still, the fade is a little long, so let me switch back to the grabber one more time and drag this dot over a little bit so we can shorten up the fade, and let's check this out. Back to the selector tool, let's play a piece of it. Up, oh, selector tool, that's what I meant. I think it's still a little bit long, so let me go back again and drag it to the left a little bit. Uh, now I think it's a little bit too short. Let me move it one more time.
Okay, finally, that feels really good. And it's always better to keep the master fader a little longer because we can always trim it back later on if we need to. Let's go back up to the magnifying glass. I'm going to double click on this so we can view our whole session in the window. And just a note, when I was switching back and forth between the tools and Pro Tools, there is a smart tool in Pro Tools that will switch back and forth for you, but I don't tend to use that a lot. Just my preference. And another preference of mine, let me just drag the master fader back up to the top of the session. That way I can easily find it whenever I need it. Just to review now, we cleaned up the front of the song using the master track and the automation on that track. We went to the end of the song, made sure the fade was clean by using the same process. Now in the next video, I will be showing you how to take all of these separate tracks and show you how to bounce them down to one single file so we can master them. That's called bouncing to disk. We're going to get into that a little bit in the next video. Stay tuned.